All right, guys, welcome back to Journey into Pandora. Currently 3-1, so we had a shaky start to start the first part, but things are okay now. We're not doing too bad. And we played a mono blue list. Now, mono blue has been pretty decent uh, since I escaped my first loss. Doesn't have a lot of land requirements, so I can build quite, quite mid-range if I want to. And that's actually what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to double neutral across and play a Master Swordsman because I want to get lakes here for my jumpers and my charges. I have a lot of Triton warriors, I also like battle toads. And yeah, this I feel this deck is, is is pretty solid. I'm not sure if I'll get nine wins with it yet. It'll very much depend on what my opponents are playing. If I can dodge Elderwood Embraces, I should be okay. But I do have three Frogifies in this, so you know, three Frogifies are going to be very powerful. You know, when I have to deal with big creatures. So Master Swordsman just going to collect off these wells. Probably going to maybe double neutral up next to maybe just late, maybe just shift in tide up, lake, move, collect, and kill whatever's on here. We'll see what shows up. I also have a punishment to answer what shows up here as well. So if a neutral creature comes down that I can't quite handle with my Master Swordsman, just drop a punishment on there. I could even still do the shift and tide play if I want, uh, just to get more aggressive lands down. Now, one thing to keep in mind is my opponent still has explore, and as you can see, there's explore coming down. Oh, that's a that's a that's a big guy. <laughs> I'm gonna need a frogify to answer that. So it looks like, hmm, this is a bit of a problem. If this did one more damage, it'd be fine because I'd happily clear this because it would get no benefits, but on its own, like I said, a bit of a problem. I think I'll just take a lake and pass here. Excuse me one second. Just got to turn the little heater off, it's getting a bit warm. Right, so mass, um, this Cobbled Warlord is a threat. If a Horse Master came down, we're going to be in a bit of trouble. We'll see what happens. Hopefully there is no Horse Master, and I'm going to be okay. <laughs> but you never know in Pandora. I, I could really do with a Frogify, so maybe I don't need to use this for mobility. Maybe I could use this for card draw. To just try and find that Frogify to take care of this Warlord. <laughs> there's, a sword, there's a Horse Master. Feels bad, man. Okay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and then I draw it off the top. Okay. I can frog this. That's four. I can punish this. That's seven. And then I can play the mace man. And interestingly enough, my opponent isn't in a position to double collect, so. I think that just works out for me. I can take another lake because I have to. I want to get this frog fire down. Punishment. The mace man in between the wells. No shards of Pandora yet. <laughs> they must be all clogged together. We're just going to get a burst of shards at some point. Now this does give my opponent an opportunity to set up aggressive land. Maybe take an aggressive mountain on my well. But that also gives me an opportunity to move my mace mana set up with an aggressive land of my own. So, curious to see what happens here. Maybe just like a Cypher's Wrath. Yeah, just a Cypher's Wrath to answer it. This puts me a little bit behind now because, well, mainly because I just don't have anything to play. Oh, scratch that. Plus one into Triton. Feels good. Okay, so removal or a Gift of Steel could be a problem. We'll see what happens. My opponent currently has initiative, so my opponent is the player who gets to answer my questions first. I'm just hoping there is no answer to this Triton Warrior because I don't really have anything else to go by. We'll see what happens. Because even if I was able to double collect and plus one, I'm still not playing Gabriel Warden next turn. And Shift and Tide, not going to be that helpful in this situation. It's 
So considering what to do with the brigand, it very much depends what's in the hand. Is it a gift of steel? Very easy decision. If there's a Cypher's Wrath again, or maybe a Flame Burst, it could be an easy decision if there is a creature to follow up. Flame Burst, I think, is absolutely fine here because it would deny me any Feria collection and the Brigand would produce Feria from its combat ability. So this land placement is kind of indicating to me that my opponent doesn't have an answer because it's trying to stop me from developing aggressive land in that spot if I was to jump up, take the double collection. Yep, just trying to stop me from creating any land. <clears throat> Water elemental, not really what I'm looking for. I think I take a draw. I think I'm going to draw off this. Phantasm's okay. So I'm going to move to the other side, and the idea is that. If I move to the other side, I can have another like angle to apply pressure. So I can still fight for the left hand side, but then I could move over to the right hand side, say if I was to pick up a Colossus or something like that. We're both very strapped for Feria, my hand's very expensive. So if I can get another Triton Warrior and put it on the right hand side, I might be able to double collect you know, and get some Feria back to make sure I can play these expensive cards in my hand. Because right now we're, we're both very starved. The, the only fortunate thing for my, my opponent, he managed to get a 5-7 down before running out of Feria. So carefully deciding on what to do here. I guess you'd want to play a creature because you want to get value out of the Warlord. The Warlord's going to increase a creature's attack by plus three. If there's no answer to both my threats this turn, no, I, have, I have a way to clear this Warlord. So getting a creature down would make sure it could get that value uh, from its combat trigger. The time is running out. Gonna water elemental defensively. And there we go. So just getting good value there. Nice thing for me. Down adventure is not bad. Down adventure just dies to this anyway. But it's got to be big enough to clear this, I guess. So we jump down, play the Darren Adventurer. Just force these to trade more than anything. It's filled for Feria for four Feria. Oh, I could have drawn for Pandora. Clyde Machine would have made too much of a difference, to be honest. So now I'm going to be able to play these expensive cards in my hand because we're going to be gaining 6 Feria per turn. Oh, safeguard. That's a good one. Into an aggro mountain. So I'm going to take a draw here. Oh. Ah, let's see that doesn't work out for me. I'd rather frogify this and play battle toads. Or do I just MP at this point? Maybe I have to just wait. I don't have a treasure that has a high impact, that's the problem. So I think I'd rather just force a clear. Or 
Alternatively, I could Clyde, if, if say the Phantasm moves out of reach, I could Clyde Machine Frogify as an option, but it's going to be very hard for me to win this now, I think. I really needed Frogify Battletoads there. I can't just Frogify and leave an empty board, it's just not realistic. Five. Oh, that's going to be pretty brutal. Luckily, it wasn't a treasure. It's going to be Battletoads. This makes things far more difficult for me. Let's get some fear here. Let's see if I can come back. It's going to be very difficult here. Those two, uh, those two, uh, war warlords were the main problem. You I know, mean, just big bulky creatures. Cypher's Wrath as well. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do much about that. Plus one into an Exalted Ogre is a 7-7. So, that, yeah, that's going to be game. Another Frogify. Can, I can delay the inevitable. That's all this Frogify is going to do. Oh, my opponent gets another treasure as well. That's that's kind of sad. Oh, and another treasure. <laughs> yeah, that should just be game. Yep, good old hammer. It looks like my opponent had an amazing draft, to be fair. That's a pretty incredible draft. Cypher's Wrath, Hammer of Wrath, Gemshell Tortoise. Very solid draft overall. Now we're on a free 2 now we're on my final life already. Straight to the start of this part, that's no good. So let's get into another game, and hopefully I can continue to win and get a good score with this run. Alright guys, we are back into another game, and unfortunately I'm going to have to have a rematch against Reki. Now, it's not going to be easy, I know that for sure, so let's... Let's throw this away, I think. I don't know, actually, it's not bad. I'm gonna go down the opposite side this time. It's a little difficult for me to do, in a way, because... My opponent can just go down the same side as me, but I might just go lake here, then double neutral, double neutral lake. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Interesting. We did play Wrecky last game, right? <laughs> Is this the same deck? Explore. Yeah, I think it's the same deck. It's just decided to aggro me this time. Interesting. Okay. Good draw. I'll take it. I'm also going to move this land out of the way and then place my own defensive land. Alright, so now we've kind of got board back. We, we've also kind of defended quite well. See where our opponent goes next. I expect a lake to come down. Cypher's Wrath again? Maybe I just arc on there? I don't know, I want to, yeah, maybe I just arc on there. So I've given my opponent Fairy of Aldi for the Brigand. Let's see what my opponent gets up to. I'm a little nervous. I don't, I don't know if I can win this. All right, get that link down. They're just gonna pass. Okay. A 
Take the value, I guess. Maybe just play an Archon? Yeah, we'll pass there. So we've managed to defend against the Rush. Now, in our original match, it wasn't Rush. It was a more mid-range style deck. But I guess with the Cobbled Warlords, you could be more aggressive. They are very good aggressive cards. Deciding where to place the land. Maybe just, just, just try and stop me from going up. No, nope, going for a lake. Into Baltos. That's pretty handy, you know, finding that Frogify. You know what? We're just going to use this, uh, oops. We're just going to use the Swordsman here. I guess you can use a Triton to stop my opponent from collecting. So if my opponent wants to collect Fury, they have to go make a land now. Because I can only jump here. So yeah, Triton, Triton trades as well. So Triton's going to trade with the, the Battletoad and it's going to deny a Fury. So that's that's the plan. Still have two 4-4s four kind of hanging around these mountains as well. So if anything, two... Too troublesome comes up. I have the, the creatures there to answer it, but I also have the Frogify ready just in case. I need to take care of a big threat. It's actually better for me in this situation if my opponent was to drop something massive like an Ogre Battler or, I don't know, another Cobbled war Warlord. It would actually benefit me greatly because the Frogify would give me some tempo back. So I, I'm hoping for the big creature. D drop anything you want. <laughs> drop me. You can drop a king. <laughs> you can drop. I don't know. I, I'm happy with a big creature coming down now, just because of that frogify. So it looks like the land is going to be developed, building towards that gem shell tortoise, but also collect inferior, which I think is is reasonable. And again, like Pandora is uh, so far away. There we go, nine Feria. Feels good, guys. And another Frogify to boot. Can't go wrong with that, can you? So I'm actually gonna move this here. Double neutral. Frogify and clear. So the idea is my opponent's. My opponent invested a lot into stopping me from being aggressive, so I, I I figured that it'd be a good idea to go against this plan and still get those aggressive um, lands down. That's that's the plan here at least. So now I can now I can get an Outland Ranger down. I can zip up here, get an Outland Ranger and campfire, and clear out this frog. I didn't want to draw there because I didn't. I don't feel like I need cards right now. I have a Frogify for a big threat. I also have a Queen's Guard to follow up with. Uh, sorry, Queen's Favorite to follow up next turn. I also tried to force my opponent to build land in order to use the, the Battle Toad to take care of my Archon. That doesn't look like it's going to be a case. He's probably just going to clear out my five one, which I'm fine with to be honest, because I still have Frogify for anything that. Uh, Big that comes down in the future. So I think I'm think I'm in a pretty decent position. Oh, goes to the collection instead. I guess he feels he can maybe Cypher's Wrath this, Fal Falcon Dive it. Yeah, I'm just gonna Cypher's Wrath my 5-1. 
into a firing plant. Actually really good in this situation. It's gonna force me to come back down and finish this off to protect my Outland Ranger. I think I might take a draw here actually. Sturdy shell. <laughs> a good card. So I decided on the Queen's favourite because it does clear the frog and lives to tell the tale. And my opponent does have to develop land if he wants to collect off my well. So I'm just making it a bit more difficult. The Varian plant was kind of annoying more than anything. It just meant I couldn't push four damage this turn, but it wasn't that big of a deal. The Archon was in reach, you know, I, I could protect my Outland Ranger, which is absolutely fine. Where's this little frog going? Is it going to the center? Okay, central frog. Pandora awakens. Yeah, I kind of want to clear this, but I feel like I'm walking into so I feel this is a trap. <laughs> I feel like I'm being debated here. I have a lot of Feria. I'm happy to sit on, on 10 Feria and still have a, a reasonable board. If I Shaker is very, very annoying here. And I could but the thing is I could frogify it if my Queen's favourite does stick around. I'm actually interested in making a leg here next turn and playing a sturdy shell in an aggressive position so I can chalice uh, from the palace and hopefully start pushing some damage. That's the plan at least. Is that Cypher's Wrath? Oh, another flame, two flame burst gone. Wow, this guy drafted two Cypher's Wrath, two flame burst? Pretty nuts. Alright, we're still gonna chalice. We're still gonna do it. Mega sturdy shell. So my sturdy shell can't really move. It's gonna be stuck there for a while. Which is fine. <laughs> it's gonna push two damage for a turn. It's got seven life, so it's gonna be a bit of a, a nuisance. It's gonna add up over time. I'm gonna develop an aggressive Wave Crash Colossus next turn. Now you could just you could say, why didn't you just play the Wave Crash Colossus anyway? That's a good point. But what is this sturdy shell gonna do? Not a lot. My sturdy shell is not gonna have gonna just be dead in my hand, and I wanted to make sure I could do something with it. That's uh that's definitely a thing. Oh, ugh, almost used the the other one. It's fine. All right. There is another chalice from the palace, but I'm able to push an extra seven damage, along with my sturdy shell next turn. Getting punished. I know this deck has a Hammer of Wrath in it as well, so an Ioner's Mirror and a Hammer of Wrath. Two Flame Bursts, two Cypher's Wrath, two Cobble Warlords, two Battle Toads, a Gemshell Tortoise, an Axe Grinder now we've just seen. Like this, this is a pretty good draft. Two like Tier 1 Treasures. Uh, very good cards in Flame Burst, Cypher's Wrath, and you're going to have access to that removal. 
But I don't understand why I don't understand why an aggressive line was taken here. Maybe just playing to the strength of the hand. But even then, like it's just a, it's just a bit odd, I think, because I feel this deck did so well as kind of like a mid-range deck. Right, I'm just gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna shift and tide this out of the way. So I can push seven there. Ah, oh, I should have maybe went for a draw first. Yeah, oh, draw last. Feels good, man. <laughs> right, we're gonna put, put a mace man here, and then we're just gonna put a little jumper. Just something to clear out the taunt. That's that's why I played the Triton. Because the taunt wants to move back and stop my Colossus. I can just clear it with the Triton, push another 9 damage and go from there. So this game's looking a lot better than last time. There is a Chalice from the Palace, so... A good chalice here could maybe allow the defender to clear the colossus or at least clear the, the warrior. No, nope, bad bad chalice. <laughs> Pretty happy with that. Not even enough to clear my triton warrior, which is really good. Because if it went into a 4-5, it'd be very annoying because I'd have to move probably my sturdy shell down to finish it off. We'll see what happens. I'm just gonna hit my hit my mace man. Oh punishment feels good guys. That is gonna be lethal. And yeah, we got our revenge. <laughs> Took our revenge of the deck that beat us, uh, beat us in the first match of this part. Revenge is mine, and now I am up to 4-2. So, be nice, but we could very well get 9 wins if things go our way. Let's get into another game and see if I can carry on winning. Alright guys, another match. Hopefully, we can get a win. And Deadlift OP, a new opponent for us to play against. Not going up against Reki again. And the the beautiful turn run player Pandora, Triton Diver. This card's fantastic. You'll be able to double collect off wells for me very easily. But unfortunately, we're going up against Red, so it's, it's a little sad. Uh, I guess I could just start getting a creature down this side as well. So I have the opportunity to try collect going into next turn. And this is obviously going to reduce the cost of my Wave Crash Colossus, which is going to be very helpful. It looks like my opponent is going to firebomb my... That's really good. I mean, that, that cost four Fairy, this cost three Fairy, and it did manage to collect at least one. So feeling pretty good about that. I'm just going to move up here. So I'm playing very aggressively, as you can see. Uh, just because I have the Phantasm, I just have such a good way of making things very awkward for my opponent. You can see my opponent playing very defensively in response. So I'm going to just double neutral across here. Maybe we can even get this Queen's Guard down. Because next turn I gain free. I should collect off the left hand well, unless that gets removed, and I can make a lake and I can phantasm. That is the plan. Path to paradise, okay. Into a massive Tiki Caretaker. A 5 free. And an Elderwood Embrace. Yeah, that is a that's a big tiki. And that's fine, you know, I'm just gonna 
I'm just gonna phantasm that anyway. We'll build a lake. We'll build a lake here. I'll pass. Because if he can't clear my Queen's Guard, I can campfire the Phantasm and clear the Phantasm and keep my Queen's Guard intact. The taunt's always always very nice as well because it's stopping my opponent from collecting any Feria. I'm playing right into my hands here. Oh, even better. I could just ch Enchantress. That's that's fine. Enchantress this and clear. Swords master this. I mean, I could, I could actually just throw my five five at this so I can push damage. What's going to be the best way to do this? I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like just going for the campfire anyway. Simply, simply because it will allow me to keep this at full, and then I can use this as a way to clear a threat on the follow-up. I don't even need to clear this. This can't attack. It's just stopping me from going in. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go for an Outland Ranger, and I'm we're two shards in. Do I do I go into double collection? And if I play, if I double land here and I collect two Feria. I'm fine for that. Just gonna leave it there. I'm not that bothered. I can use I can use the sixth one to kill it next turn. Might as well just get value to start off with. Queen's assassin. Cohen Reveler. Collect, clear, move back, clear, Triton Warrior. Take a draw. Yeah, that's gonna be the line. So the Outland Ranger might not get much fairy actually. It might not have been worth building into the wells there, but but you never know. Like the the thing with Pandora shards are, you never know when they're gonna come. Like we had two games where you barely got any Pandora shards. So if I could double click from there for a, for a couple of turns, it's it's generally worth it. I know I know some people strongly disagree with that, and that's fine. But it's not exactly like I'm in a losing position. <laughs> I don't feel like it's going to have a tremendous impact on the game right now, uh, playing it in this way. Just going to play a warrior. Just completely trying to block my opponent from developing any pressure at all. I want my opponent to be defending until I win. That's the plan. We've already seen one treasure being used, so I do have the Earthfire Shaker as a way to deal some damage at least, or maybe even clear some threats. Um, I think I'm just going to do this. I want to I don't want to play this here. It, it doesn't seem right to me. Oh, did I have lethal there? Yeah, I had lethal. <laughs> I had lethal with the Earth Fire Shaker, so what I should have done is ran the Outland Ranger into the Wood Elemental, uh, Earth Fire Shaker, deal the two damage, and then finish him off. So I did miss lethal there. It's a little sad. I won't miss it this time. I 
And Kadu. I don't forget this does damage to my opponent sometimes. Cause it, like 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 it's kinda like Grime Shaker, I suppose. It is a shaker of some sort. <laughs> it's just an earth fire shaker instead. Alright, so 5-2. Doing alright. Let's keep going. Alright, another game. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can get that chicken dinner, those nine wins. That's the plan. See if it goes according. Uh, double neutral into Mason. Oh, maybe not. I don't have that much fairy. Double neutral's fine though. I can take a lake here into Mason Man, and then I have my Triton Warrior Lake. To Wood Elemental. Where were you the other turn? So Mace Man, going to be pretty good against the Wood Elemental. Into a Punishment? That's not fair. I think the Warrior is better here because I can jump to this spot if I need to to clear the wood elemental or I can jump over any blockers that come down. Oh, power-ups are so strong in Pandora. Very difficult to deal with. Yeah, I'm going to be on the defensive here. Without a doubt. Let's just get these two to trade off. Hopefully there's not another power-up. There is another power-up. I'd probably just lose. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll see. I'm oh, going to trade. Okay. I can maybe come back a little bit. Oh, he's dashing. Right, so I'm just trying to get an Outland Ranger to stick on this side of the board. If I could, I just need to collect a bit of Feria. That's that's my problem right now. There's going to be an aggressive line built here. Not a lot I can do about, unfortunately. Goes into a mountain. Hopefully not another combat creature. Nope. All right, so I get to collect a bit of fairy at least. This is going to help me. We're going to campfire this so it can at least trade with one of these, and then we'll go for the Archon. Oh, this this boss is going to give such a big fairy pair as well. So double collect in, plus two fairy off this guy. This guy goes to my face as well. You know, there's a, a good opportunity that I have to hit it again in order to uh, make sure that I clear it, which gives it an, another additional two fairy. So this card's probably just going to snowball out of control, and I'm just going to lose the resource race. Live in Willow, make life difficult. Let's continue to get value from that underground boss. Well, that's not a bad draw. Not a great draw, my opponent's on <laughs> tons of Feria. It's going to be very hard for me to get come back from this position. I do have a Frogify at least. I was face to place here. Nope. Going to get more value. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, I get it. I get it. Wasn't destined to win this one. 
My opponent draws like crazy. Yeah, there's no point in... There's not even a point in continuing this match. My opponent had such an amazing... Every turn was amazing for my opponent, whereas the turns for me were kind of just very average in comparison. So that is going to finish this run, this journey into Pandora. Five wins, three losses. Not my best score, but probably not the best deck either. But it, it was nice to play a bit of mono blue, playing a more tempo mid-range orientated deck. But yeah, not too bad, but not too great either. Hopefully next time we'll do a lot better. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, drop a subscribe to keep up to date of when our content goes live. You should check out my earlier journey into Pandora, so if you haven't already, if you joined the series, be sure to check that out. We also had a deck spotlight last week for Rizo's Yellow Tempo, which helped him secure the top four spot in the Aurora Open. So until next time, guys, take care and enjoy Pandora.